Ladies and gentlemen, a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another 365 Trading Academy War Room. War Room number 82. Can I get a mic check? Can I get a money check? We've been doing this for 82 war rooms, but you know, it's, it's actually super amazing. My goal this week is actually to review the last 10 war rooms we've done together. And it's, it's, it's not a who who look at how much money I've made. I'm just going to be telling you guys how many pips and index points we've gained versus how many pips and index points we've lost so that you guys can actually see it in real time um, um, just how beneficial these war rooms are, all right? Um, so we know video today, unfortunately, I am extremely tired and I just feel guilty about how uh, disgusting uh, my my hotel room is. I'm still on the road. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a little bit busy, so I've fallen behind on, on our, our day trading series. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm, today's war room is going to be different because of that. All right, so today's war room, I'm going to be actually looking at intraday setups, right? So I'm going to try and build on content around that scenario analysis day trading series. I'm going to weave it into a swing traders war room, which is what our war rooms are about. But there's really not much to talk about when it comes to these swing areas. We've marked all of them out. Now, all it is is just waiting for your entry point to be hit and your take profit or your stop loss, right? So so that's that's the game right now. Markets are doing exactly what we've expected them to do in the last two to three to four weeks. Um, it's phenomenal. So, so that's why I want to focus on short-term trades or at least drill down into lower time frames. Because of that, this video is going to be both found inside uh, 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 the 365 Traders War Room uh, playlist all right but I'm also gonna put it into this playlist here called the day trader series right so inside the day trader series are currently seven videos please please familiarize yourself with that content that that should be a course by itself scenario analysis is predominantly out of my PhD research that means it is a big part of my market edge my market edge is to intimately know the instruments that I'm trading to to the anatomy detail, all right? So this is why I'm traveling right now, right? I'm doing a lot of workshops uh, with, with different corporates across South Africa at the moment. Um, we do do this for both our corporate clients, right, at the end of the year towards September, October, November, December, but also we seem to be collecting a new set of people who actually just want us to kind of like show them our stuff. So please familiarize yourself in there because what I'm up, what I'm going to do today builds up on that, all right? So what, what I've done, what my course does, you know, you know, through and through is it generally builds on a set of rules, all right? So I, I don't t tra teach uh, trading by theory, right? I, I give you guys a set of rules, all right? And that's what we need to quickly familiarize ourselves with today before we start. All right, so real quick, if we can just, if I can quickly switch on to my whiteboard, um, um, and, and we can get cracking. By the way, um, um, I think I did say this in, in, in the last war room, but I, I, I pointed it out at the end. So I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. A lot of, I was thinking about two weeks ago, it would be amazing if these workshops that I keep flying out for are for retail traders. I tell you, the benefit to retail traders is amazing. Because the corporates that are hiring me to do this kind of stuff, they have a lot of capital, they have a lot of manpower, and they just want their flow traders up to date, okay? And I understand that, right? I understand that. But if we could get this information to the people, it will be absolutely amazing. So this is my commitment to you. Um, uh, if, if you're watching this and you're serious, right, you're serious, if you can organize 10 people in South Africa, I'll come. You say... You, you, there are 10 of you, I will pay for my own flights, my own accommodation, I'm, 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 listen, I'll take care of myself, but if you can get 10 people wherever you are, in, in well, let's start off with South Africa, right? I will literally make a day trip, we'll do a two to three day in-person workshop, age to five, 8 a.m. to about 5 p.m., you know, before I have to fly out, and I start you on this process, right? Granted, it will trigger an eight-week learning course, but at least you'll meet me in person for about two to three days together so 10 we get 10 people who are actually serious i think it's something crazy to throw into my schedule but something absolutely worth doing right so 10 people if you're serious just drop an email to head trader at uh, 365 trading 
academy uh, .co .za, and I, I promise to make it out there. We will we'll have to decide on dates and have to look at calendars and all that kind of stuff. And if it's agreeable to all parties involved, then sure, I'll definitely fly out. Right? If you're outside of Africa, I'm talking Botswana, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Namibia, wherever it is, we probably should base it at around 20 people, all right, just to make it uh, in really worthwhile the trip. And obviously, the stay might be slightly longer, right? So again, same email above. It just takes one person to organize this, one person to say, I found 10 people willing to register, please come in person, right? And I promise to make that happen, right? Well, I want to see if this is something to add into my workshops, my workshop list for the end of the year, and also something to incorporate in general in the culture of 365 for next year and the years above. So 20 people is for outside SA, 10 people is for within South Africa. Because what I'm noticing is corporates are eating this stuff up like crazy. They are really benefiting from this. And I think it would be amazing if actually every single retail trader had access point for this, right? So, you know, I'm just gonna put it out there like that. You know, you take it, how you take it, you use it, if you want it, I am making myself available, right? But on to today's stuff. So once again, we are doing, um, I'm going to say it again, head trader at 365tradingacademy.co.za, right? So that's my email address that will come directly to me and my PA, and then we can see who's serious. Head trader at 365tradingacademy.co.za, 10 people in South Africa, wherever, wherever you are, I will come. 20 people out of South Africa, I promise to come. Let's do chat about dates right but flights accommodation i'll handle i'll take care of myself i will come i will come for you guys um right so now let's let's see let's see what we can do today so today i want us to kind of like you know you know i i will give you guys the swing overview for each asset we're going to look at but the honest truth is i am going to get to the root of the small time movements that's why i want to be part of our day trading series right so it is a war room where right? i traders war room traders war room uh 82 because we're going to look at those swings but there's going to be a day trader in it right but just to quickly remind us about the work we've done so far because i think it's absolutely important right so real quick uh say it out loud with me don't kid yourself uh, there's a reason why we say these things out loud our subconscious mind is listening and it listens to us throughout the week the whole week you if you got a stop loss hit you got a stop loss hit if you're greedy you're greedy if you saw every time you lose money you saw if you're panicking and closing trades fast this is a psychological problem that you need to fix right this, this is it like if, if if you get into a trade and you keep checking your phone every 10 seconds every 15 minutes if you think trade it means you can't even go to the toilet without checking your mt4 mt5 you have a trading psychological problem that is going to impair your trading so we started off like this all the time and this is not enough me doing it on sunday with you is not enough i can't do a video about this stuff every single day just for you to say it out loud write this stuff down and say to yourself five times in the morning five times at night if you can't be disciplined to do the simplest of things like that stop trading don't sign up for my course don't don't do it because trading requires you to be better to extract what you want from the market it is a highly disciplined routine every day every day in every way i'm getting better and better as a trader it's a non-negotiable thing i tell myself it doesn't matter if i had a good day or a bad day every day and every way i'm getting better and better as a trader we've spoken about this many times there are different ways to get better one of them is watching this video one of them is attending war rooms one of them is joining courses one of them is reading more learning more back testing the little efforts you're putting forth affirm yourself clap hands for yourself because every day and every way you're getting better and better right these are simple trading mantras that you want to throw in i am educated in how the market works all right you can't trick your subconscious mind please remember that you can't lie to yourself you only so this would probably apply for registered students if you've done my course if you're doing my course if you have access to how the market works tell yourself that Right, because at some point the problem is not about knowing how the problem is executing what you know so if you have a basis that i'm educating how the markets work tell yourself that i know how to find a place and trade the supply and demand for us right if you know the stuff say it out loud i am creating a trading plan and i trade my plan very important to do i trade with risk management there is not a single youtube video that i release 
inside the description, if you read all that stuff I've written down, there are always two, two key risk management videos inside the description. As long as I release a video on trading or, or signals or whatever, inside the description of every single video I do, there's always two risk management videos that I have in there for you. Please take the time to watch those videos, you know, around risk management, because you'll be surprised at how much progress you can make with just a hundred US dollars trading. You'll be surprised at the lot size growing. You'll be surprised at how that stuff needs to be done. There is a mechanical way. When something is mechanical, it means it is a non-negotiable. It means there's a formula and all you have to do is to follow it. So if you have not watched those two risk management videos, which by the way are pulled from my registered classes. Those were like real lectures, right? So if you, you get to see how I run my classes, but you also get an amazing information, really, 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 really high impact value. So I would, I would suggest you check out those risk management videos um, as soon as possible. First, you know, before you start trading. Okay, something you need to tell yourself as well. I am not going to chase the market emotionally, right? I've seen this happen many times. I am not going to chase the market emotionally. I am patient, right? Most of the money is made from patience, waiting for price versus diving into price. I never trade without a stop loss. So you'll be surprised how basic this is and how many traders still fail at it. In fact, do you guys know the amount of negligence it takes to blow an account? Like you have to be so negligent to actually blow an account. You, 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 everything has to go off. Your risk management plan has to go off. Your stop loss existence or stop loss placement has to go off. Your lack of information of where to trade has to go off. Your trading plan has to be absolutely at zero. You're clearly not trading in clusters because if you were at cluster trade number 10 out of 20 or 15 out of 20 or 15 out of 15, in your clusters there have been red signs to let you know that you are off, your psychology is off, or your trading strategy is off. It takes a lot of work to blow accounts. In fact, it takes less work to become a consistent, profitable, disciplined trader than it does to blow accounts. And yet we live in a world where blowing accounts is more common than the air we breathe. It is absolutely ridiculous. But the important point here before I start today is all these things, all these things have one Thing in common all these things have one thing in common and it's an old old verse it says my people perish, perish right due to lack of knowledge if you don't know how to balance out any of the things I've just said your trading is going to suffer there's not enough videos in the world that I can do for you to help you if you don't have a concrete basis plan for knowledge so please take the time to do the small this initiative that i keep starting it's a big deal right it is where you need to be you need to be at a learning place first right i'm giving out free money every single sunday i have the trade results i have my journals i can see the stuff that i said i'm recording it for you to go back and test my words to see it for yourself you now have the evidence on youtube for free 82 war rooms you can literally go back in time. I mark out every single zone and you will see for yourself. We have an 80 to 85% win rate in and out bear markets, bull markets, ranging markets, recession, inflation, Fed printing money, Fred tightening the policy. It doesn't matter, right? The swings win all the time. So the problem is not Leroy. Leroy spent over nine years working on his crop. The problem is not trading, so he's trading strategy. Supply and demand has been around since the birth of capitalism, which is over 400 years. Capitalism uses supply and demand to identify price of an object. Bread, milk, stone, weapons, guns, doesn't matter. It is inherently part of pricing. So if the strategy is not bad and the educator is not bad, the gap that needs to be filled is on your side. So once again, if you would like to learn, and I encourage you to do so, the link is down below. Register for the course even better, right? Even better, even better. If you hear my call and you can find 10 people in South Africa, I'll come. I will literally come and open your eyes, right? 20 people outside of South Africa, I will come. I think it's important. 
I dedicate the next two years to doing something like this. What do I get out of this? I am interested in legacy. I'm interested in counting the number of lives. And I appreciate all the messages I got out of debt. Great, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm paying for this. My trading is better. Every type of feedback is amazing. But when we got to about 40-something six-figure traders that we created in the academy, I got obsessed by that. Like, what if 365 could birth a new renaissance of financial practitioners? The first two to three years with me, yes, you will feel like I'm trying to create a trader out of you. That is not my goal. My overall long-term goal is that everyone who walks through my doors becomes a fund manager. It doesn't mean you have to work, work in a banking sector or in a finance sector. A fund manager over your life. You literally know how to predominantly create money out of the markets to do what it is that you need to do in the same way a professional fund manager would be. As I speak today, 365 has built six proprietary financial firms that I have nothing to do with. I don't control, I don't own, I don't invest in. It's just people who went through the process and started their own thing. All right, so that's my overall goal. That's what I get out of it. To do that, I clearly am learning that I need to be everywhere. I need to be on the ground more. That people are not just going to come to me because I just lost some knowledge, right? It took me two years to come to that conclusion between 2020 and 2022. Like, why is 365 not viral? Our stuff is golden, right? There's a different approach for that. You have to approach humans and meet them at their level. And so in every way, you know, every day I'm getting better and better as an educator as well, right? And that's why I'm saying, if you're 10, I'll come. If you're 20, I will come. If you're an individual and you want to get started, hit the link in the description and just start by yourself. I will be there. Either way, you will always perish due to a lack of knowledge. Now, um, I, I think for an introduction for today, that's good enough because I really want to get into the meat of things. And because I'm going to be taking my time in scenario analysis, I don't even think we're going to do many charts, right? So it might just be because I really want you guys to digest the stuff, right? So let's begin with the facts. The facts of the matter is on the 3rd of June this year, I started releasing files on something called scenario analysis because by then I had already fully designed my module three. My module three is a day trader series. And then I don't know if you guys are following, I don't know which group I told the public group or the private group or only the senior traders. I don't know. But we have two nannies, they were still in from us, blah blah blah. It was terrible. It was a breach of a lot of things. It wasn't just money. We lost um um you know, you know, important files, we lost uh, one of my cold wallets or, or crypto cold wallets. It was a serious breach, right? So it felt like an inside attack on three six five, you know, uh, uh, with the people they got involved in, etc. And so I paused on that. And then I really started to look through the stuff that I could release for now while we re-uploaded our stuff on a much more secure site and while this court case gets done. And I started releasing files on scenario analysis. Right. So to date there are seven videos on the YouTube channel on scenario analysis. Seven videos on the YouTube channel. I'm going to work on the thumbnails uh, because, you know, the first three videos are the exact same thumbnails. So I can imagine that could be confusing uh, for some people. But in video number one, and I want, I want to extract the tools, video number one of scenario analysis, which is how to trade Euro USD scenario analysis part one, I, I, I introduce. Um, um, intimate knowledge, right? Intimate knowledge of of, of your peers, and and of course, I was using Euro USD here as an example. And what I was driving at was, you need to know the average number of pips. This is so important. This, if if you guys can get this stuff, the nice thing about trading is everything is there in plain sight, but hidden to those who see with average eyes. It, it, it's a, it's phenomenal. I literally only use my charts. My charts are everything, right? The average average movement of an asset in terms of pips in the day. Now, there are many ways to calculate this. Some people look at 24-hour days, right, to midnight to midnight. And I found that to not be the best method of calculating the average pips of movement because I sleep for five hours a day. Uh, normally right on average about five hours a day and then i need to read for three hours right so already that's eight hours gone okay and that's a third of my day done to none trading so what i realized was would i be able to get the average amount of movement in a 24-hour period 
where I'm actually active and trading. And therefore, we go to the conclusion of sessions, trading sessions. So in video number one of that scenario analy uh, analysis thing that we did there, I looked at the trading sessions. And I told you guys, because I'm a morning person, the 9 a.m. London session works for me, but the same can be applied to the New York session in the afternoon. All right, just that most of my meetings and also I run stocks trading program every week. I live stream with senior traders because we love trading stocks, right? Stocks are much more complicated. They move better. They are, there's always new stuff to learn. You can analyze an entire sector and become proficient in agriculture, mining, tech. You know, there's just, the, I can produce lifetime content around stocks right so that's what my afternoons are reserved for so using the morning times which is the london session in video number one i used euro usd as an example you have to do the same for all the charts you're going to look into and today's war room i'm going to actually break down how swings and then day trades and specific pairs market correlations go hand in hand and they will be signals so i hope you haven't left us yet right stick around Stick around. It's just an hour to two hours of these videos. Knowledge that can empower you for the rest of your life. It's, it's crazy. Stick around and subscribe. Please take the time to subscribe. Right, so 9 a.m. session. So, and, and, and since we're on Euro USD, I can tell you right now that for me in general, it's an 80 pip movement. And that's important because sometimes when you look at the charts at 9 a.m. and you come back and look at the charts at about 12 p.m. to lunchtime, just before the New York session starts, you can actually just determine by looking at how far price has already moved in the day. Maybe the day has only moved 20 pips up, right? And you can make an educated guess because we know this about the London session. The London session will always create the close, the low, sorry, the low of the day, normally the low of the day or the high of the day. That's what the London session will do. Guys, pay attention. Jeez. This stuff is this kind of like information that you need to be painful. That is to say, at about 1 p.m., right, I could look at a candlestick that looks like this. At about 1 p.m., the trading session started at 9 a.m. At about 1 p.m., there will already be a long wick like that, and the candlestick is already red. And I could make an educated guess looking at the daily time frame and the H4 time frame that the 9 a.m. session today might have already created the high of the day. I'm talking about day traders here, the high of the day, which means the 9 a.m. opened quite high, all right, opened quite high. And now we can anticipate that for the rest of the day into the New York session, Right, price is just going to fill the candlestick down, which means on those smaller time frames, I'm most likely going to be selling. I am doing this based on how far price has moved right now, how far price has moved at that moment, say between 11, uh, uh, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. How far price has moved? Has it moved 10 pips? Because if it has moved 10 pips, on average, I expect this asset to move about 83 pips per day. There are ranging days where it will move about 35 pips, but on average, it will move at 83. Remember, average is a mean. It, it, it's not the longest or the shortest. It's the most common number across, which means there are days where URSD can move about 112 to 120 pips. But the point here is if they've moved down here around about 1 p.m., then there is still a chance that I could get a 70 pip movement to the downside. And that could be my trade idea. I hope I'm coming across clear. Right, so that's what video one dealt with, intimate knowledge of each asset, right? And a good trader would have a notebook to write this stuff down because you are not going to remember all of it, right? But I have had success and I could do a new challenge as the month of October. I could dedicate one trading account into just trading Euro USD, and I promise you I would make more. And I'm talking about a small account, 100 US dollar account, 0, 0.01, all that stuff. I would make more money than most of you trading multiple things at different times with different strategies just by using my intimate knowledge around the stuff, trading one asset. That's where a lot of you guys miss it. You need to understand in trading and in life in general, in trading, but in life in general, less is more. The more you become a specialist and a master of something, the more you get out of that thing versus being a jack of all trades, right? And, and this is not like a big debate. I'm just saying, 
That's all I taught in video number one around scenario analysis, right? And then in video number two, which was trading Euro USD scenario analysis part two, I then started to emphasize on this intimate knowledge and big key events. So we looked at NFP and our NFP, this NFP is coming Friday. Um, you, 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 you see, I'm, I'm telling you the stuff now, right? And, and then you'll be surprised. NFP seems to be an anchor in the markets because it's a big retail trade event and a big banking event. And in the year 2022, it's been one of the major reports that Powell uses to base a lot of his decisions. So there we go. We've got NFP this coming Friday, the 7th. Right. And so what I did was I showed you that, look, NFP, CPI, mark these things on your charts because these things are crucial. NFP, CPI, mark them on your chart because they're absolutely crucial. What happens is on that H1, by the way, all of this is happening on the H1 time frame, right? Part one, part two, everything for me by choice on the H1 time frame. And what happens is from month to month, the, in 2022, there's been significant correlation with where price is at an NFP level and it creates a supply. This year has been a lot of supplies on Euro USD because this year the labor market has been strong, therefore DXY has been very big, all right? But anyways, supply, I'm gonna write here, or demand, but if you find the supply and the demand where NFP reacts from, you are almost guaranteed a 30-day trading rate, right? You're almost guaranteed that, okay, fine, this is gonna go up or down for the next 10, 15 days. Remember, in Forex, not in Bitcoin or crypto, but in Forex, we've got about 20 trading days a month. You guys waste a lot of time. Some of you have the knowledge, but you don't have you, you don't have the information because you waste a lot of time. You waste a lot of time, you miss out trades, you're not paying attention. Right, so imagine, right, so so and I say 20 trading days here. I'm, I'm talking about 20 trading days. And to be exact, to be fair, it's 22 days, right? There are two weekends, Saturday, Sunday times four, two days in a weekend, Saturday, Sunday times four, where we can't trade. That's eight days in a 30-day market, right? 30 days. So you've got 22 trading days. And out of that, guys, let's be honest, 15, about 15 to 18 will be active trading days. You can't trade every single day. Price doesn't mark up every time properly. Markets have to retrace. Markets have to consolidate, right? Look at Ethereum right now, right? I'm currently stuck on an Ethereum trade because there's not much I can do. There's literally not much I can do on Ethereum. Let me quickly show you what I mean. This is it. I can't break even. Well, I actually looked at this yesterday, so maybe something has changed. But I, I, and, and if this was my only sell at Ethereum right now, I would be in trouble. Right? Look at this. This is a range. I can't do anything. I can't say I've made money. All right? Maybe one is to two. If you're one is to two type of trader, then yeah, good for you. I'm not. I'm not a one is to two type of trader. I need me a good one is to three to get out of price. Right? This is literally barely a one is to one. Right? There's nothing I can do. I have to wait. I might get to get stopped out, right? If we, if I hadn't taken these sell positions one, two here, I would be stressed out about my Ethereum uh, 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 trade right now, right? But thank God for that. I hope you guys, I hope I'm sharing the screen. I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about because these are the type of decisions that, let me reshare Ethereum, there we go. So the, I now know for a fact you can definitely see. These are the type of decisions that you constantly need to make, right? There's nothing you can do there. Look at, this is the day chart. Look at all these days. I got triggered there, hip hip hooray. But since then, one, two, three, four, five, six, got zeroed out on day six, literally went back to zero. And then back into profit, seven, eight, nine. It's been 10 days, and I haven't made that much money from my third sell on Ethereum because patience is everything, okay? And that's what I'm trying to say, is that you guys have to become mechanical in your trading. If you keep wasting money, if you keep wasting time, right? If you're missing entries because you forgot to sit and forget, you are going to find yourself at a difficult place because out of 30 days in a month, only 22 days are traded, and within those, some days are not good. So technically, after 15 days, there's no money because you are not focused, you missed out on trades, you waste a lot of time, you watch half of my videos, you don't write stuff down, no general system, and before you know it, a whole month has passed. All right, so in, in, in the second video, I look at that NFP, CPI, one hour time frame, and how it generally sets the tone for the month, all right? And how to link that up with your scenario analysis video. 
in video number three, uh, this is important. I'm going to do it like this because it's important. There's nothing you're rushing for, right? Let me take my time to show you the stuff. In video number three is where I start to talk about BOS and change of character. In video number three is where I talk, start to talk about BOS and change of character. This becomes very important because price is fractal, right? And if you've done the course, you know I teach on this in module one for two to three weeks. Fractality of price is the hallmark of how we get into our swing trades. It is the hallmark of multiple time frame analysis. If you can't read fractality, you cannot trade. Knowing price action is not enough with price fractality. And it is in the nuances of price movement that you start to see this stuff on smaller time frames. That's when you can start to read break off structure, which is a continuation of trend and also change of character. And how these things start off on the smaller time frames and start to shape, right? Start to literally shape the 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 the, 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 the full uh, 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 you know, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, you know, enunciation version of, uh, 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 of what the day chart will look like eventually. So once again, if I can quickly get out of my, 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 my whiteboard, and I'll show you something real quick. Get out of my whiteboard and I'll show you something real quick. Look at this. Look at Euro USD. Last week, Sunday at the war room, I told you guys, expect retracements. That's number one. In the public telegram group, in the public telegram group, I told you, I told you, this week is a week of retracements, right? Remember, we've been selling, selling, selling. I literally said it, right? So, 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 so let's just quickly go to the one hour time frame. Keep this H one out, right? Look at this. We've been floated nicely. And then I say to you guys, after the war room, war room 81 on the Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, I make posts on the public Telegram group that we are expecting a lot of retracement to happen. Why? Because we noticed there was. First of all, a break of structure just to continue the downside, then a change of character. When a change of character occurred, I told you guys that my latest sell on Euro USD, I was stopped out in break even. Price broke through this, used a broken supply to start edging to the upside. Now, on the smaller time frames, like the one hour time frame, we've got a short term bias to the upside. A short term bias to the upside. Understand what I'm saying. Short term buying is happening i'm not saying you should be in it um, I'm, no, I, I try to get in a buy here price clearly lift without me so i'm not in a buy i knew price was gonna go there i'm not in a buy right the only buy i'm in is this one the one i told you guys about in the public telegram group in fact i even posted this chart setup in the public telegram group right when i say retracement time is coming change of characters have been right and markets have obviously reversed short term in terms of fractality we've got a change of character on the higher time frames as a swing trader all we have is a retracement i want you to understand that all we have is a sell side retracement right so video number three explains this kind of stuff to you guys video number three breaks this kind of stuff to you guys you know down properly right break of character and it leads up to video number seven i'll get to video number seven later but i upload an Full public lecture on how to use the FIB and why the FIB is one of the most powerful tools to uh, supply and demand trading. But we'll, we'll get to video number seven in a second right now. After all of this was done, all right, I then moved you guys to, uh, um, 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 let's just move this now to the right. Let's move this to the right because, you know, video number two. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach today because I think it's, it's, it's predominantly important, right? I'm about to disappear. Live classes are about to start. When live classes start, you know, it comes out of my public time, right? So there's actually, uh, these videos that I make, the war rooms are all part of how to build a community, right? But it's pretty much building traders up. But in the event I am doing live classes, and I'm only doing one this year, right? In the event I start doing live classes, that is what makes up my contribution to public, right? My, my, my community service, building up traders, so to speak. So you'll start to hear less of me because I'm pretty much dedicating two to three hours a day every evening teaching people so please use the link down below and join us so you don't get left behind because when that starts it's going to be an amazing time right video number four in the series was then practical applications i won't even waste time video four and five was me showing you setups putting video one two three together and making money right and literally in general for intraday trading for me 
and for why am I saying for me? Because it is based on capital allocation, capital allocation, number one, all right, capital allocation plus my maximum, right, maximum pain amount, pain limit. So how much am I, uh, do, do, do I allow myself to risk out of my capital? So my capital is never at full risk. The other video to watch for this kind of stuff is on, I did on the channel, was the master traders spreadsheet go back and watch that video and see this maximum pain amount if i have 200 us dollars as capital as a trader i am not putting a lot size to risk 200 us dollars that's ridiculous that is ridiculous right as a trader i'm coming up with a cluster system to trade in clusters and then dividing out of that stuff i'm going to allocate 50 dollars or this is an example now you don't have to use this number i'm just saying i allocate a partial amount of profit to monitor my cluster trade how much can i make out of 50 dollars so to speak yes yes you're going to be on 0 0.01 what, what what lot size do you want to use you've got small capital right small capital is not a handicap to a disciplined trader you just simply use the markets to grow it but my point is i my percentage of lot sizing is not based on the map of my entire capital my percentage of lot sizing is based on a small portion of a portion of my capital right so so watch this video master uh, trader spreadsheet to actually get a good grip uh, or understand of what i'm saying because right now i unfortunately cannot uh, you know get down into that kind of stuff right but anyways um, my capital allocation plus my maximum pay right equals my my, my percentage risk and in video four or five i showed you guys how euro usd in general for me is a 200 dollar day in scenario analysis in general and i just want you guys to know deep down uh, when, when i'm fully day trading i day trade a total of about 10 assets at the same time those that correlate and those have a, a negative absolute correlation that means those if, if euro usd is going up then please note that i'm most likely in a usd cad uh, position as well because usd cad is a 70 and 80 percent negative correlation of usd all right so in general as a day trader I normally walk away between anywhere between 2,000 to about 2.5, 2.8. I've done 3.2 before US dollar day if I'm right across my assets. And that's what I want to get into today's war room. I want to start joining all these assets together so that we can have a good look, right? But that's pretty much video 0.5 did, right? It put in all this stuff together. So I'd absolutely encourage you to watch it. And then finally, you know, video six in so far the day trader series. Um, um, I, I looked at a beginner's guide to reading liquidity in the market. So I came up with a very basic liquidity uh, schematic and the rest of them are going to complicate them in module three so you understand how banks draw these things up. But in that basic liquidity schematic, you actually get to put every single trading strategy to the test. You see why supply and demand is supreme. You see why you always get stopped up. You see what the algorithms are always looking for. It is absolutely crucial. You understand that basic setup in video six and you look for it all the time. Every time there is a change of character, video three, in the markets, let's go to EURUSD, you will always see that schematic pop by. So let's go to last week's um, 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 change of character. Excuse me. Let's see if we can see it. Let's see if we can see it. Right. So we're talking about this whole, there's a liquidity line right there, downward trend, right? Right. Retail traders who are taught just to rely on trend lines only. What do you think happened here? What do you think happened here? What do you think happened here? With the supply as well. What do you think happened here? Right. People lost money. But what about these people? right people lost money okay but you can see it even more clearly when you start to drop to 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 to, to popular retail timelines like 15 minutes five minutes blah 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 the other thing that we're not really talking about because there's not enough time to talk about is guys if you notice that nasdaq made a new low uh took out uh june low and yet euro usd and other risk assets are going up right so this week we're at a, 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 a complete a, 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 a disjointment of how risky assets move, 
right? There's just not enough time to talk about all these beautiful things, right? Simple. So, so video three taught you to kind of like start to look for these small, you, you know, you, you know, no, very, very, very much sim simplified things in the markets, which a lot of traders like to call support and resistance, and also understand the schematic flow, how they push price up, hold the negative numbers, push price to the other side, and then come back and close them, uh, and then move to, to, to the side that they're going, right? So right now, there's not a good, a, a good lecture on it, but I'm saying go watch video six, right? All these schematics definitely are based on the liquidity feeding um, 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 that fundamentally is how smart money works. And if you're paying attention as a day trader, you can actually see the shift of price uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So you must have your liquidity schematics drawn up on your charts all the time. And then finally, 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 video number seven, which they looked at, um, 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 Beginner's guide, beginner's to pro guide on drawing Fibonacci retracements because that's all we will ever experience in the market is a trend. And in between that trend, there'll be multiple retracements until we get to a reversal where Fibonacci does not apply. And so you must master this kind of stuff. So this is where we are, you know, so far in the day trader series. Today is video number eight in the, in the body of war room number 82. And today we are going to be looking at market correlations for a day trader market correlations and i'm going to give you the data behind it and how it is i get to this number you know or, 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 or on the days i decide i'm fully day trading when i when i have the time and the focus remember a day trader rule number one for my floor traders i've got four day traders on the floor i've got 12 traders who work with me all right i'm trader number 13 technically speaking but out of the 12 Right, eight are swing traders like me, four are day traders. And the rule for my day traders is simple, bum on chair. A day trader's job is to watch charts consistently. You're not a swing trader. You don't get to, 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 to kind of like move away and you know, sit and forget for long periods of time. Bum on chair. So those of you who want to be day traders, this is a rule, bum on chair. You have to make the time for this kind of stuff. Right, so today I'm going to be looking at market correlations for day trading and how that works. And we're going to map out some signals in it all right so, so so i hope i hope you've stuck around for that i hope you you've successfully managed to subscribe already okay we need people to subscribe a lot of people are watching our videos but are not subscribing so please do subscribe please do subscribe and like the video but on to today's lecture around the stuff right so you know let's go to the charts for the day um uh, it, it, you know see how far we can go um, if not, then I'll just continue during the week, right? So the goal today is not to give out 15 to 18 signals. The goal today is to settle you into your own money-making information and to point out a couple of things. I would be happy to go through three key charts that I use for scenario analysis, obviously Euro USD, then Pound USD, and AUD USD. Because today I'm showing you the entire play of how I gel my assets together. So how I, I you know, I approximately try and get to about 3,000, 2, 2.5 US dollars for my day trading uh, or, or, or per week, etc. I'm going to be looking at the positive correlations. So for example, Euro USD positively correlates the most with pound USD and absolutely negatively correlates the least with USD cap. And so if I look at Euro USD, I must automatically look at pound USD and USD CAD, which is already three charts. So if I look at Euro USD, pound USD, AUD USD, like I said, together with the absolute positive correlations and the absolute negative correlations, that will be about nine charts. And I think that's a good target uh, for this particular war room, only because of you know time, uh, place, and the fact that I really need to wrap this up. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish in the morning. And I'll be picked up for the airport very soon to get my connection flight back home. Right. So let me just put it all in front of you. And maybe just before we start, just before we start the signals, just can I please have three minutes of your attention? It's really just three minutes. If you don't like it, you can skip three minutes, right? It's just a short, short announcement that I'm about to play for you in the next three seconds. Three, two, one. Traders, traders. 
Hope you guys are doing well. I have, I'm back to my grayscale color. I just love this grayscale stuff, man. Traders, I have, I have, I have a request and I never ask anything from the community and I don't want to put any type of pressure on anyone. I will only send out one email about this to registered students and you know, whoever is in our mailing list, but there is a particular cause that 365 Training Academy gets behind every year. This particular cause is congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease is a heart condition or a defect that develops when you're still in the womb, all right? And, and, and naturally a baby is born with it. It becomes worse and worse and worse um, um, if that child between the ages of zero to two does not get proper care or dental hygiene um, um, and fundamentally the mother too, right? So what happens is these babies are then born with defective hearts, all right? I'm, I'm in a country, I'm based in a country called South Africa and I can tell you right now, the queues for heart transplants are longer than hearts available, right? So every year there is a team uh, a Rose University indoor cycling team and they host this fundraiser event in honor of congenital heart disease and what these ladies do they're cycling instructors right they put their hearts and bodies on the line and they cycle for 12 hours straight I mean 12 hours straight and they invite the community to come and join them cycling so if you're in Grahamstown I dare you to come and cycle with these ladies you, you, you just need to be there for an hour it's 50 rands per bike literally just 50 rands per bike okay that's one way you can help the second way you can help if you're far away or you can't make it on the 8th of october to come cycle with these people is you can just simply donate all right there is only one official bank account right i i mean i know i never ask anything from the community but i'm really asking you guys i'm happy to match any 365 donation i'm happy to to to, to double it whatever it takes to get you guys involved please do all right there's only one official bank account though it does not come to 365 please don't send it to us there is only one I'll, I'll, I'll put it up here by the side i'll add it into the caption of this video you'll see this on youtube I'll, I'll, I'll put a screenshot of it it is the official rhodes university sports admin fnb bank account all right if you are donating as an individual please write 365 then your name and then cyclothon it's important because we're trying to pull sponsorships from everyone right but i would love to see how many people within 365 actually donated so once again if you are donated as an individual please write 365 then your name and then cyclothon as the reference right now and you can send us a copy a, a copy of a proof of payment so we can track your payments out then we can collate how much 365 as a family donated if you want or if you are able to if you're a registered company guess what you can up and you and you're based in south africa you can donate and then request a section 18 donor tax certificate that you will submit to sars all right with your tax returns and so that sars can then you know you know help you with the deductibles there i am looking absolutely forward to this event um it, it's very close to to, to to our heart as a family as a 365 family like i said my partner heads the fundraising of this event so it's absolutely gonna be a banger uh once again looking forward to it see you there uh, if you're there um flow let the donations flow but until then enjoy the video that you're currently watching shake my hands peace right, boom shake my hand welcome back um so i'm pretty sure if i time this correctly you've just watched an ad on the congenital heart defect project that we are putting our full backs behind and i, and I want to encourage everyone to come through um if you're reading grahamstown i will be in town if you're not in grahamstown please do feel free to donate we will be working our butts off as an academy to do just that as well. Uh, we've already bought out a lot of sponsored bikes. So we just bought out bikes and just keep buying them and just giving them to random people to come cycle. We will be matching any financial institution's donations. So if an institution, a local bank gives 5,000, we'll match that 5,000. So far, we've given about 44K. And this is just to give you an example, right, of, of, of where we at. On the day on Saturday, actually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of that weekend, all crypto trades, everything, Ethereum, Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff, we will be given all those profits that we make Friday, Saturday, Sunday towards, um, you, know, you know, the CHD awareness. So it's an absolutely amazing thing to get behind, and I really hope to see you guys uh, get involved, if you can and are able to. Right, so back to our, our day trader series this week. So we want to look at EURUSD. Number two, we're going to look at pound USD, all right? And, and I find the pound to be a very interesting currency right now. 
Then number three, we're going to look at AUD, USD. And this is simply because of time and how my day has been structured in the creation of this war room. I want you to understand this. This is how a prepared day trader, swing trader needs to operate. Now, first thing you should have done from video one, remember earlier on I was telling you guys about the different tools and rules I've given you in the seven day, seven part series around this. This is video number eight in that particular series. It's gonna be in the war room, but also in the day series, is you need to understand your assets. Video one teaches us about the intimate understanding of each asset you can honestly say on average for example euro usd moves a total of 83 pips right so give or take about 80 um, um and maybe I, I you know everything of mine is not spaced out nicely sorry about that it's just it's very important we nail this thing correctly right so there's pound usd there there's um why i'm, I'm such a white Board Pro, why, it's, why am I struggling today? Right, there we go. Maybe it's because I'm tired. Right, so then that's AUD, USD, right? So the first thing you want to have on, on your notepad, um, where's my second? Yes, this guy is, I feel, feel like I've lost control of my system. Right, and I, when I, normally when I travel, I only carry two screens with me. Right, there we go. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, right? And then, so here, here Here's what you need to know, and you can verify this and back test it all you want, which I think would be important for you to do, anyways. Right, so I'm going to say on average 83 pips. This doesn't mean it can't move more than that or less than that. I'm saying on average. Right, average is a mean number between the highs and the lows. Pound will move about 82 pips, 83, 82 pips. This is because they're very closely correlated. And AUD, USD during the London session, right, or, or, or during a trading session, will do about 60 pips, right? It's more active during the Asian session. But obviously, if you're within my time zone, you probably want to be asleep then, right? Now, the next column that you want to know about is the dangerous column. This is the dangerous column, but it is nice to trade when you have your, 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 your skill right under control. Why is this dangerous? Because now I'm going to tell you everything that positively correlates with each other. So for example, there's an 85% correlation with Euro USD. We'll go back now and, and double check my facts, right? So what that means is if Euro USD is going down, there is a 85% chance that pound USD is going to go down at the same place or a very similar place at a very similar uh, pace. Same as if Euro USD was going up, all right? Right now, for pound USD, all right, there is a 90, and, and the, number one, guys, always look for the highest possible correlations. You really don't want to trade anything and say there's a 60% correlation. You want the absolute highest that, you know, data can provide you, right? So with pound USD, there is a 95% positive correlation, right? Positive correlation, and I feel like, you know, maybe we should have that written down somewhere so that we don't, you know, you know, become confused in the future. So this is positive correlation. That means these things are identical or they move as identical as possible, right? So that's going to be the other chart we're going to look at. And and you're going to notice that some of them, I don't, I don't even have my, 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 my vertical lines up because of my eyes, right? But you need those 9 a.m., 9 a.m. London session lines up there, right? And the last one, AUD, USD. NZD CAD, NZD CAD, which would make a lot of sense if you understand commodity market, has an 85% positive correlation to AUD USD. Why did I call this dangerous? This is a dangerous way to, to, to view the market because if you are wrong on Euro USD, Pound USD, AUD USD, it automatically means you are also going to take a stop loss hit on Pound USD, Pound CAD. And NZD USD. Did that make sense? I hope it makes sense. What I'm saying is, if you make the mistake of opening a buy on Euro USD, thinking price is going to go up, and because Leroy told you that there's an 85% correlation with pound USD and Euro USD, and you take a buy, then these are all risky assets. So, technically speaking, when this is going up, this is going up, this is going up. So, if you have three buys going, and then you think, well, let's make more money and also buy the correlative pairs, it means you will end up having six trades all going in the same direction and if something was to happen to you especially on those small time frames where you guys see big red candlesticks and and, and there's a big drawdown you run the risk of being wrong six times at the same time right so that's why i'm saying it is generally dangerous to trade 
uh, positive correlations. Uh, 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 even if you know what you're doing, it's just dangerous. It's not a good hedging thing, right? So it's a, it's a thing that I generally fight with my day traders all the time, right? In some charts, yes, you have no choice, but to correlate the movement is great, especially if there's confluence with the swings, right? When there's confluence with the swings, oh my goodness me, believe you me, I am knee and hands deep in. I can tend that 2.5 to 3,000 US dollar trading with about 5 to something because it matches up with my swings, um, um, there's multiple, multiple retracements to come and feed from. But if you're just day trading and markets haven't arrived at swing levels, it becomes slightly more dangerous, right? So somewhere in here is, you know, as you go about, you're going to learn about how to identify primary markets. And I've done a, a public lecture around this. I just can't find it, so I'll upload it on YouTube. But I'll look for it properly again. Primary markets are key. Primary markets means which of these assets is going to move first? And if it moves first, right, it will give you a blueprint of the correlation uh, pair. So if there's a primary market that has a history, according to your back test, that always moves first, the correlated markets, the, it increases the probability of that asset following suit, right? So, so this is kind of like one way to use correlative uh, trading. So for me, it's always Euro USD. Uh, 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 but you know, pound USD then later on took over during the year and has been leading the falls, leading the retracements, etc. So that's quite interesting to see, right? And then you need to have to, or you need to know at least um, um, negative, negative correlation, right? So for negative correlation, we have uh, USD CAD, and the highest that I know about that I could find, and it's important, this is in brackets because it's a negative. It literally means minus, right? So negative 79.6 percent which is this is the highest asset that negatively correlates with euro usd don't forget this is about line number one is about what positively correlates with euro usd and what negatively uh correlates with the euro usd so pound usd is the highest correlation positive they move together and when euro usd is going up the highest asset that will move down in the opposite direction in negative correlation is USD CAD. I hope I'm clear. If I'm not, feel free to drop questions in the comment section. It's absolutely crucial that I, I, I come across as clear as possible. Right. Here we've got USD JPY is a negative, highest negative correlation for uh, pound USD. So for uh, USD JPY, we're looking at a negative or minus 90.4%, so about 90% negative correlation. So, so now, you know, you, you have to be an amazing thinking person as quickly as possible because then when you have a trading plan, you want to have trading assets in your trading plan. So, for example, if I'm buying Euro USD, what am I doing? I'm making a bet that DXY is weak. So, on average trade, I'm looking normally for sales, but I have not sold the dollar in a long time. I'm just even short term. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big dollar buyer right now. The dollar is back at, you know, dot com levels, right? The dollar is back at 51 year old highs, right? But let's just say, in theory, if I'm buying Euro USD, I'm making the assumption that the dollar is weak. But if I'm buying Euro USD, I'm also saying, you know, pound USD is also going to go up. But because the dollar is weak, I'm also saying things like USD CAD, things like USD JPY are weak so i'm gonna be selling right do you, do you understand how my schematic works right if it will be and it's simply because i have this played out and right? i don't have to think about it when i start to trade it's written down and i'm just moving and thinking around it right and the lastly if aud usd has got a positive correlation with nzd care of 85 percent the negative correlation for aud usd is again usd swiss franc so you know, and, and I'd like to do a part two of this with the, the other uh, six assets. So I've got about nine of assets of uh, here on the primary markets and their correlations, right? So if you think about it, it's a lot of charts. You, let, you end up having a lot of good trade setups on the table, right? If you really focus, right? So now I've got a uh, uh, dollar Swiss franc and there's a 91. And I like these ones. See this high 90s? It means the correlation or the negative correlation is going to be quite high, which means I don't have to do a lot of guessing. So I think today if we can limit ourselves to this particular uh, uh, negative correlation. If we can limit ourselves to, uh, you know, right here, for today's video and maybe we do an hour and then kind of like move on 
Monday, Tuesday, when, when I've rested and I'm back home, I'll then do a part two for you. I promise, right? This is very important to get this right. All right, so this is kind of like basic stuff, right? You need to know what to buy, when to buy it, and why to buy it, okay? So this information that I've just given to you, all right, is, is, is can easily be found on, on Forex by FX book. Right, you, you just open my FX book and then you just kind of like think through it. Um, let's see, let's just quickly test if what I was saying is true, right? So, Euro USD is a popular one, let's not do a popular one. Let's go to AUD USD, right? There's AUD USD, I'm just gonna click and open it, right? Total absolute correlation, let's see what I have. So Total absolute correlation for AUD USD is obviously NZD USD, but I, I you know, these are literally just twins, right? Like they're both little islands, they're both commodity markets, they both, you know, catch the flu when when China snoozes. And the reason why it is not my favorite go to all the time is because if I'm trading AUD USD, there's no difference. You can see there's no difference at all between AUD USD and NZD USD, right? So the next one that I generally, 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 generally prefer, right, and, and it was, and I think we spoke about it earlier on, was NZD cap, right? So this is absolute correlation. And if we scroll here, there's the AUD, USD, NZD cap as a 95%. I think on the whiteboard I said 85%, right? So let's quickly correct that. It's not 85%, it's actually 95%. And there it is your top positive correlations. Most of you wouldn't have this, depending on your broker. Uh, AUD USD has a higher correlation, but you can't. I, I can't trade it because of how I've set up my schematic. I've got pound USD as my, one of my primary markets for other assets, right? So, so the next one that I'm looking at is AUD USD is NZD cap, right? Pound try. A lot of you guys don't have this, so I skipped it. So the next logical one is NZD cap. There we go. At ninety-five percent. And I think I said earlier on that, you know, there, there's 85. And I just want to quickly, quickly correct, uh, you know, correct that. Right, right. Where we are, where are we? Where? There we go. Uh, AGS entity is 95, not 85. Apologies for that. Right. But, but my point is, it's a very, very high correlation number. It's a very, very high correlation assets. And the only reason why I didn't pick the other ones is because they're generally not common things that retail traders trade. But these are things that you can easily find and easily trade on a good broker like, you know, Avitrade or whatever it is that you use, right? So we've got here as the next logical highest positive correlation, right? And then for negative, which is basically what moves the opposite direction of what these ones. I just want to quickly remind ourselves, I think I said USD Swiss franc, and let's see why I said USD Swiss franc. Where is USD Swiss franc? It's very far away. Why do I have... Maybe it's a preference thing, but anyways, you can decide for yourself. I prefer USD Swiss franc, but there you go. You've got uh, USD SGD, not a common one. I can't use USD CAD because USD CAD, as you saw, is already a negative correlation for Euro USD, right? I've really thought through the stuff, so I can't duplicate it for fun. Uh, you could potentially use USD ZAR, uh, and the reason why I'm not using USD ZAR is because USD ZAR is a good negative correlation for silver which we'll get to in the second video, all right? Uh, you know, so so, so, so it, it's quite a lot. And, and here I say USD Swiss franc. Uh, I just can't seem to see it, but uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with the information, you know, at some, at some stage later on. But basically, all this stuff is here, positive, negative correlations. You know, it can go on and on and on and on and on and on. But generally speaking, like I say, please stick to stuff that's 85% and above, or at least the highest logical and you'll get incredible high logical ones but sometimes with the common brokers that you guys like you won't have them so there's no point in me bringing them up right so my, my point here is the stuff here is, is is on um my ethics book right so our assets for the day are quite clear uh, and that's what we're going to do right so let's start off with the swings for each and then look into the intraday right so you would know that for euro usd We've been gladly holding ourselves. And like I told you guys earlier on this week, that this was going to be the week of retracements. And you can see, you know, this is Friday, this is Thursday, this is Wednesday when the retracements started. But also at the same time, you know, as a swing trader, we noticed that a, a gift was given to us. 
right? A demand was popped, taken out. I'm removing this area here. And now we wait. This is on the governing time frame. Do I think price is going to move all the way back up into this governing supply? It can if it wants, all right? You can't discount. Just because you've been selling this on daily time frames does not mean price, price needs to, at some point in time, come back and get a correction over there. Do I think that's going to happen now? Most likely not. Personally, I don't think that's something that's going to happen now on the strings, right? I, I do expect some type of leg, right? So I can't draw a Fibonacci. I'll show you guys in the latest video, right? But if you look careful on the governing time frame, Euro USD has not had a chance to breathe, right? Look at that. It's just one leg. There hasn't been a good, perfect swing low, right? So we don't know. We need a full month to know. I need to, uh, the month of October. Uh, the candlestick formation for the month of October is going to start on Monday, right? Today is the second. The first was on Saturday. And so the first printing of a new candlestick for October is going to start on Monday. If it becomes a green candle, then all of a sudden I have a swing low. All of a sudden I can start to draw these great, you know, beautiful, you know, uh, you know, high, higher time frame perspective swings, for example. This is what a, a governing Fibonacci would look like. And you can see, you know, the golden ratio areas all the way up here, which is kind of like a stretch, right? It, it, it would mean, you know, dollar is retracing on a monthly time frame, and euro is going to use that opportunity to kind of like retrace before dumping again for six months, right? But over here, we've got a PCP level at 0 0.38, 0.8%. And you really should watch that Fibonacci video if you don't know what these numbers mean. And we've also got a British engulfing pattern there. And so this, for me, in the long-term perspective, is something that most likely will need to happen so we can then continue to sink into more lows, right? But can price just keep dropping from where it is right now to further down? Absolutely. Absolutely. can without that. There's just enough momentum and capitulation in the markets right now. There's just enough fear and bad news. On the weekly time frame, all I'm seeing is, you know, again, uh, 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 you know, a desperate, uh, you know, kick of a dying horse to make it all the way back up there. I think, you know, we, we, we can, for a fact, agree that, you know, Euro is going to try and make it all the way back to the higher 90s, right? So 99, 98%, you know, just under one is to one to the dollar, right? And, and you can see on the weekly, there's not much, there's no clarity. There was almost an order block, which almost gave an imbalance. Nothing happened really. What happened all was a mitigation of this uh, August supply, where markets kind of got into last uh, this previous month in September, and then markets have been falling ever since. And right now we've got a green candle. It is normal to get green candles. See, there's a green candle after drops, drops, green candle, green candle drops, green candle drop, green candle. This has been the same pattern: big drop, a couple of green candles, big drop. All these complicated three six five candles or counter trends that facilitate the next big move. So we're not, I'm not, personally, I'm not too worried about that. Then we are here on the daily time frame, which is kind of like our last entry. This was entry point number 11. If you're a war room, you know, weekly person, you know what I mean by number 11. I mapped out all the different swing entries from last year, May or March or whatever, um, that exists on Euro USD on the daily time frame to prove a point that as a swing trader, discipline, and routine is important as we practice patience. There have only been about five, 11 clean entries where you cannot get stopped out uh, on Euro USD um, ever since June 2021. Just 11, just 11. All right, and finally we got tagged on entry number 11, and actually there was a creation of entry number 12 here. And, and that is what we are wondering is going to happen here on the, on the daily time frame. Of course, I must warn you guys on Euro USD, you do want this Friday. You want also another sideways movement here on the daily. Even one price to come down, uh, 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 you know, that would even be better, right? Before markets get here. Why? Because this will give us distribution. This will slow down the buyers. This will facilitate more selling pressure to occur when we get to order block number 12. Uh, if markets just arrive very parabolically, then we can assume that this area will be removed, right? Potentially all the way to number 10. That's because number 11 has already done its job, right? So if 12 doesn't hold, then unfortunately we're looking at number 10 or an original supply being created somewhere here. Only time will tell, okay? And you know, I do this stuff every weekend. You guys can actually track my accuracy of this stuff. 
Right, so I'm just gonna go back to my swing chart, which is the exact same thing, just a little bit neater. Right, so the daily time frame, this is where number 12 is. So I'll be watching for distribution this week, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Watch for how price arrives at that area. You know, watch very carefully and then judge it according to that, right? So for the most part, you know, we can conclude that in the short term, there's a long bias for price to get somewhere, right? We couldn't draw a Fibonacci on the governing time frame. There was really not much to talk about on Euro USD when it came to weekly. But on the daily time frame, we definitely have a swing high, swing low. Right, and it tells us that Friday sell off was because price had already arrived at the golden ratio. That's why markets hit that dot there. If we go to H4, we might even find a price being facilitated by an order block by the golden ratio, multiple bearish golden patterns that ended up facilitating a drop. You can see on the H4 time frame that drop left a new supply at the 50% line of the people Nachi. And all of this is very possible. Oh, markets could then continue the upside, right? But I'm just saying, it makes sense that we can see all these type of, you know, retracement areas taking place. This is the latest market phase, the latest market link, right? If we look at the overall picture of the market, it'll look like this if we do that. Let's quickly do it. I'm doing this because this week I dropped a phenomenal video on, on swing trading. And so I think it's absolutely worth you guys checking it out on, on, on retracement trade price. So right now here, I am tracking the last break from price swing high to swing low. You can see there's my golden people not. You can see that's where price came back. You can see it. it's right there. I'm not making it up. It literally happened. We took those trades together in the world, right? And then after this low was created, right? Marcus then went on to break it. Then Marcus created a new swing high. And now they've made a new swing low. And so we know what each level means for us, right? We also know that markets have a sequence repeater, right? So there's the golden ratio area, right? Which is where I say, watch how price gets there, right? Make sure that we get some type of distribution before price gets to this level, all right? From this previous swing. But if we draw a Fibonacci just from this latest fresh supply, then you'll see that we've already approached a, a golden ratio for the latest leg, right? The latest leg would look something like this. Sorry, wrong tool. I hope I'm not confusing you. If I am, once again, there's a whole video on the channel of Fibonacci, right? And you see here, this new Fibonacci that I'm drawing with the latest leg, I'm gonna delete the old one. I'm gonna delete the old one so it's clear. Don't worry, I got you, I got you. Right, so this now, I'm, I'm drawing a new Fibonacci from here to there. You can see markets have already arrived here, right? But there's a potential for this older, fresher, higher sell order block, right? To be mitigated, depending on what price decides here on that H4 time frame, come this Monday, Tuesday, all right? But, you know, looking at it, don't forget we have to trade our tools in confluence, right? The Fibonacci tool is only as good as the order block is put against, right? We never take tools in isolation, right? So on the daily time frame, we're looking for some action up here. If that's the case, then hopefully we'll get some redistribution like that, and then maybe price can then start to fall. Um, we shall see. Only time will tell, right? So short term, you know, very short term, you know, bias for the next 48 hours or so. And then after that, we can then really start to think about at least selling. Because right now, you know, it's difficult to live in a world where the dollar is so strong and Europe goes above it, uh, one is to one. I, I don't believe it is. I don't think the supply that's been put here is a coincidence. Literally, you know, guarding the one is to one exchange rate between the euro and the dollar, right? So a lot of selling is going to take place there. I repeat, a lot of selling might take place there. Having understood the swings now, all right, and this is the this is the what this is the job, guys. This amount of analysis why I do all this. I'm just talking you through my stuff, right? Having understood all of that, I now need to clean up my my day trade chart. Remember, we've got day trade charts that I told you guys to draw and how to draw them. If you don't know how to set up your day trade chart, go back and watch video one in the day trading series. Um, um in there, right? So I don't want to remove too many things here. Now, this is the day trading chart, and I just want to make this. Now, man, then I'm gonna I'm gonna be so annoyed later on when I go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna draw a new supply, right? 
which is pretty much covering the area that we keep talking about in that previous Euro USD chart there. This is that area that we keep saying is high. This is that area that we keep saying, well, we want to wait for distribution. That's that same zone. We're going to do that. And then I'm going to remove all these zones, seller retraces that have already happened and the one that price is currently at right now. So that when I go to the one hour time frame, I am aware that inside this white block that I've just drawn, that is the daily supply of interest. And I want to line up a couple of, you know, entries with that, right? So this is what it is. So somewhere in here between this, you know, up, upper channel band, right? All the way down there is the daily supply, the area marked in white. Okay, this is the daily supply. And now I'm looking slowly but surely going down and falling on the two hour, the H1. I'm looking to see what these areas are made out of. How many micro supplies are in the daily supply? Right, so I've got this one here written golden retracement area, right? God knows which one it was. Probably on the two hour time frame, on the one hour time frame, I was talking about a potential swing. This would be the swing from here, maybe to there, or maybe to there. I don't know. We'll find out by drawing a Fibonacci from there, or right from there to there. That's 50%, and then there, all the way down there. That's golden ratio. All right, so it was this from there to there, right? From the, on the H1 screen, you can see that is the golden ratio. The yellow there means that's the golden ratio. All right, so I've got that written out there that this is actually the golden retracement area for sellers, for sellers on those smaller time frames, the one hour time frame. So this sell supply here on the one hour is very important. It is also a sell supply inside a daily supply, which is very important. And naturally, of course, there is a higher supply in there, which actually makes the, 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 the you know, the peak or even the wick of the daily supply. So there's two H1 supplies inside my daily, and so the one that we got for. Because price, if I'm right about the bearish long-term bias from Euro USD, and markets are just looking to hit a supply so they can turn around, markets are most likely to choose between these two zones. Now, these two zones are marked now as a swing. As a swing, you'll understand, or you'll probably take note that this is what I'm looking at as a swing. I'm looking at areas of competition and entries right there and my stop loss right there as a swing i must have an order like that as a swing i sit and forget this order i don't really care as a swing trader which supply is chosen it doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day i am going to hold until this area gives me three to one the, the that is all i don't care whether the price is the first one or the second one i never panic in swings i expect my take profit to get hit or my stop loss right there's no in between Okay, but for my day trading account, I'm going to be taking each area of value one step at a time, right? So like I say to you guys, I marked this out beautifully. I realized there was a change of character. I realized there was going to be a demand that price was going to come back to. But unfortunately, markets didn't trigger, right? Maybe had I drawn the demand zone and filled up the week like I taught in one to one and not try to kind of like reduce the, the exposure so I can get more in terms of you know risk reward, price would not have left me behind. But price left me behind, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not triggered in this move. Price came this low, we shall see. We shall see if this happens. Right, there's a chance for that, or markets will just move up there, right? So if that happens, then I'll happily be in that buy, because I already have a, a, an order right there, and price will go up, all right? So this is what I'm looking at in Euro USD as a swing and as a day trade and i've explained it i've explained why you know the mechanics the logic so i hope you guys can appreciate that now immediately i want to find out well if that's how that works right what then positively correlates with this movement and this is the dangerous side because remember if i'm wrong i must accept that i'll be wrong on two charts if i am wrong I must accept that I'll be wrong on two charts, right? So we all know the answer to this. It positively correlates with uh, our pound USD, but I want you guys to see the other options. 
because I just show I, I my job in on my YouTube channel is to give you information of what works for me and to educate you on why it works for me so that you can find your own process and find your ways. My course tells you all my trading rules and why I like to trade them. All right, jeez, Louise, I must have written all these correlation stuff when I was very, very, very tired, right? Because you recall earlier on I said there's an 85% correlation or something crazy like that with Euro USD. And deep down, you know, I felt something was off. But there you go. There's a 94.5, 94.8%, sorry, I really am tired today. 94.8% positive correlation with pound USD. So once I figure out what I think Euro USD is doing, I need to go see something similar in pound. Otherwise, my analysis is off. All markets are doing strange things, and that's normal. It's, it's normal for once in a while for markets to break rank and do strange things. Euro USD is changing character. Euro USD is going up and up and up. Do you see what Nasdaq did this week? Nasdaq took out June lows. Nasdaq is like, yay, we feel the pain. Look at this. You still want to buy this thing? Still want to buy this thing? Let's, let's, let's go to the daily time frame, right? This is crazy, man. This is crazy. If you guys recall, last week when I hosted the live, I think it was David. David asked me about a potentially what I thought about this demand here. And you guys heard me tell him straight talk. It's trash. Don't do it. Don't buy. You see? And I appreciate David's question because we asked that question during the FOMC uh, live event. And, and, you know, a few days later, look what happened. Right? You would have suffered immensely if you bought there. Right, and markets are now back to a strong governing uh, 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 demand that started the movement, right? And I don't want to jump to Nasdaq and all that kind of stuff um, 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 and complicate your lives, right? But, 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 but check this out. This is when, you know, Powell in 2020 starts, you know, Fed printing of the money, right? This is literally in reaction to COVID, right? The crazy upward channel is formed because of quant monetary policy easing. Easing is printing money, those unemployed checks. And because of that, the stock market eats, 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 and takes all these people's monies and they pump up. Then all of a sudden, in November, December last year, he starts to talk about monetary policy tightening, all right? And that's raising interest rates, that's tightening the, the, the fund balance, and all of a sudden, markets have zeroed back. We are back where we started. But 365 traders, those of you who have access to my course, don't forget the nuance, the nuanceness of module one, the, 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 the amount of hours we sit through those classes, the amount of information I'm putting in. Don't be one of those people who the, go through the course once. There is so much information there. What are the rules of areas of value, fresh touch, areas of value, retest, areas of value, glass effect, right? I'm telling you now. I am telling you now again and again and again, this thing is going to crash. Well, uh, it will, will not, it's already crashed, right? This thing is going to introduce us to even lower lows than we think, right? So on Friday, when NASDAQ closed, NASDAQ took out, you know, you know, June 2022 lows, right? So all of a sudden, the demand now does not have even enough orders to cover their lows, which is to say the demand cannot create higher lows. Higher lows is what you need to start creating an, an uptrend. What this demand is doing instead is uh, facilitating lower lows. Lower lows, baby, means we're going to go down and down and down. We're going to have to chow, right? So the sellers are gaining ground. If you throw in your supply and demand curve and you map out NASDAQ, you will realize the sellers are now becoming very aggressive as they start to conquer beyond the 50% region into buyer territory. That's interesting. That's the type of market I want to keep holding my sales in. And yes, we're still holding. Right. So prepare for a retracement, right? Because now that you've cracked a new low, like how Euro USD cracked a monthly demand and then started to retrace back, we expect that. We expect price to start rallying a little bit back up this coming week, maybe, potentially. Right. Just because markets are going to come up does not mean we have to jump in and buy with the markets. What we want to do is start to consider maybe leveraging some of our open positions to add more. 
at the very least, even me, I closed other trays. I closed all these cells a long time ago. But these babies that I've been asking you guys to hold since August, one, two, three, four. I hope you're still holding those babies. Because what happened was on Thursday and Friday, we got a new supply creator on NASDAQ. I'm on EURUSD. I'm going back there. But but since we're not talking about NASDAQ today, I, and we ended up on the chart somewhere, let me help someone's child real quick. There have been four unique entries onto the NASDAQ which have made people a lot of money depending on your ability to hold and multiply. I'm saying to you, it's time now to lock somewhere up here. Just lock, lock all your profits. And if you dare, start to prepare for a release. But right? you can see we already tagged on a sell here if you're in it. We're trading stocks on Friday with me, right? But we are not yet sure how far this will go because it is very close to an active demand. The demand is weak, but the demand is not dead. We need this demand to break. And by break, I mean I need NASDAQ to close below 10, 1600. If we end the week, this week or next week below 10, 1600, then yeah, fire by force, right? We're going back to COVID levels, like I, like I said in January. Excuse me. Right, so this is where we are. Look out for that. But what is interesting above and beyond is the fact that Euro USD this week had an upward retracement while NASDAQ kept falling. All right, and generally, it's normally the opposite. NASDAQ moves first, risk assets follow because of the sensitivity to the stock market and market sentiment, right? So watch out for this kind of stuff right now. Back to, 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 to Euro USD. Uh, remember, Euro USD has a 95 or 98,5 whatever positive correlation with pound USD. So obviously, after I've mapped out my Euro USD intraday setup and I've understood the logic of the swings, the next thing that I want to map out, you know, carefully is pound USD. And I want to kind of like see it. And I'll say to you, normally you'd want to see something similar on, on, on a high correlated pair like 98 percent that's kind of high that's kind of high and i'm gonna have to go back go through all those percentage points i gave you on the whiteboard uh and, and correct any mistakes I, I i may have had down there right so let's see right so this is by my, my, my intraday chart for pound usd i want to see something similar i want to see something interesting right so look at this pound usd uh, uh you know you know took out these supplies like euro usd did with a change of character like euro usd but the difference is and you need to see the difference right? the difference is on pound usd price didn't even bother to come back to a demand didn't bother didn't bother remember on euro usd i didn't get triggered there's a difference pound did not bother euro usd made an attempt the competition was still a little bit stiff so I didn't get triggered because of how tight I drew my, my, my area of value. So I'm talking about price coming back here on Friday. On Friday, price came back down, opened here, come down to go back up. Remember, we spoke about that 83% pip rule on average. So the day before that, there was an upward momentum of about 174 pips. That's big. That's a very big movement. The day before that as well, you know, markets went all the way up, uh, um, 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 you know, in, 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 in the opening session, right? Really, really doing about 200 pips and then reversed all of that back all the way by by 100 pips. So took away almost 100 pips, right? Uh, why? Why, why, why? Why did markets do that or on Euro USD, or, or what can we learn about this stuff? Why is this important? Once again, I've done it before in that video, video number seven on Fibonacci retracements. How did I know to just buy here? Yes, markets left me here, but how did I know to buy here? Right, simple. Look at this. When the buyer's market happened, right? And that is after you got confirmation of change of character. I repeat, change of character was when markets stopped respecting supplies, did not care about a liquidity trend line, and broke above this whole thing, therefore not allowing itself to create new lower lows with a change of character. Immediately, your Fibonacci changes trend. It doesn't become a, a fib that you drag from top to bottom, but becomes a bullish fib. So now you want to see the momentum. Where are the buyers going to take a break? So you draw your fib from bottom to top, right? So, so that's the fib area. And, and, and this is the simplest way. So that's why if you check when this happened in the day I dropped that Fibonacci video, you realize that on the same day, 
right there you go price comes in clean into this area here 50 percent area very common for fibonacci retracements right it's not our favorite but it's absolutely common and then markets literally stop there and then take off right after 50 percent discount 50 percent discount markets go back up or another way to think about it like i said was markets moved up 216 pips and then markets moved down right 116 pips right so that's 50 percent off right 216 minus 116 is 100 it's literally 50 percent off of the previous move and then markets started to explode and so i wanted to catch another buy here why same thing because the change of practice happened i want to catch the retracement moves right you can see here i've got my swing low swing high and markets fell on that 50 percent mark again 50 percent mark just like how they fell 50 percent here and i was stubborn i decided to put a pin in order by my golden ratio and because of that markets left it out right i'm teaching i'm teaching but if you look at the pound we, we didn't even get that type of opportunity what does this mean it means i need to understand primary markets very well right primary markets very well instead what we had was a very shorter retracement a very short retracement right so it's not like a like, uh, you know like 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 a, a pound usd where you get 50 percent or almost 1.8 percent you actually here got something much shorter, right? And I'll show it to you right now. La, 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 la. Right, so let's call that, you know, the swing high, swing low, and we put that somewhere all the way up there, and you can see, price didn't have time to give us 50% or 1.8%, right? Price then gave us a PCP, potential continuation pattern, right? That's 0 0.38. Uh, uh, percent and, and really really didn't care about any of these levels and then then slowly but surely facilitated an upward move right so pound usd has been aggressively moving to the upside uh in an attempt to recover we do know that from a bigger time frame but to understand the swing mentality of pound usd will know for a fact that there is no demand right they took out the demand right they took it out i, I wrote to you guys a long time ago hold hold pound usd sales just hold them just hold all of August to sales, hold them. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if we just hold, right? Because they've taken out all demand. I mean, this is not even the, this is the 2020 COVID demand, but I'm also talking about the major turning point. It's gone, right? There's a major turning point here. This is uh, the last biggest V-shaped market recovery of the pound since 1985. I repeat, since 1985, check this out, right? Markets went below. Markets didn't care, right? Markets literally went below that white line. And so because of that, we know for a fact that markets will have to eventually fill that void and come up with some type of bottom, some type of new major turning point. And until that happens, we are selling, right? So this is what it looks like on pound, right? Remember on, on Euro USD, there was something similar. There was a supply all the way up there and we weren't sure if price was going to get there. On Euro USD, there was a very unclear weekly setup, right? With a you know an order block here but this one is clear this is a bearish engulfing pattern right there all right it's a bearish engulfing pattern uh the red candle completely you know engulfs this there are one two three four daily supplies inside that area right which speaks to you know weekly type of thing and prices very close by so we could get you know very short term long term bias very short longs long bias that's what i mean very short term long biases so a little bit of buying for a little while before the tides turn right and on the daily time frame we are about to approach you know the very first um, um supply right we've gotten slightly better with distribution but this is still not good enough markets must distribute evenly you know just so that we are not too worried when price arrives at our supplies okay so that's the swing setup right very very simple right so, uh, supply 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 lots of supplies along the way lots of broken structure along the way to confirm you know further downside movement okay so that's pound usd so now when we're going to the day trading setup of pound usd and you guys will let me know if this is helpful right there it's you know i've marked it up there already right so this is a one hour time frame it's on the daily time frame one there's a daily supply there uh, uh, you know the, the, that's kind of like the high up daily supply give me a second give me a minute please don't forget to subscribe please don't forget to like the video if this is helpful for you feed what feeds you 
um, you know, it's just it's just awesome feedback. You can check for yourself. But my channel is not monetized. YouTube is not paying me a single rand to do these videos. Um, I'm nowhere close to having a monetized channel. So for me, it's really about getting feedback from you. Like, am I communicating clearly? Am I producing the type of content that's helping you? Um, um, I, I don't feel like I come in. I'm just talking to a wall. Like, let me know. Um, you can't hurt my feelings. You can't hurt my feelings, right? That's another daily supply. So please, please, please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I genuinely ask to hear from you for the sake of bettering um, the lane experience, right? There we go. So we've got three daily supplies, you know, nested, uh, you know, right next to each other. The first one is about to be approached, right? You can see since the the retracement, you know, period, right? Markets really have been quite green. Right, very green, right? So now when you take this now to the one hour time frame, you can then understand why markets aren't even taking, you know, you know, short term uh, 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 lower FIPS. The price wants to get to where it's going. Essentially, and that's somewhere up there, right? Now, like Euro USD, we were able to identify two supplies inside the daily. For pound USD, we're going to have to do something similar. So for now, I've got a killing hashi just for. I guess clarity and simplicity, but you can see Talitha areas of market consolidations lasted for a very long time on this particular time frame. It's probably just a couple of hours in a day, and that's when markets came back and just tagged this area on the 22nd of September, which was about give or take 10 days ago, right? 10 days ago ish, yeah. And then markets dropped like crazy from there, right? Markets are now about to return to this area all within the daily supply and that's the power of the daily supply that's why for me i always tell people identify your areas first on a higher time frame so you understand how strong specific zones are compared to others right nothing will outdo a daily supply inside this daily supply but uh, you know several more high peaks there and so it's just a game of seeing what happens when price gets here and if you can't see it clearly here then definitely look it up on your euro usd chart because there will be a massive correlation right and then we said well guess what the thing that negatively correlates the most that we have access to in general as um as 365 or as most retail traders is a couple of these right us swedish corona you can trade this on on, on avatrade but it's not that common you know the polish not that common but you can do it um this is a positive correlation this is 90 my negative uh, 94 percent if you can find it but the most common one like i said earlier on was usd cap but i see here it's 92 percent negative 92 percent 92 percent right so that's quite a big deal this is what i wrote earlier on i do apologize for that right so maybe my brain was scrambled but earlier on, I said a uh, negative correlation for euro is 79%, right? Which obviously, no, it's not. It's 92,6%, right? So please, 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 this is a big deal. And the positive correlation for euro and the pound is not 85%, but 98. But 98. Technically speaking, 99, right? <laughs> 98,5. Okay, so that's that's cool for me anyways let's do this just give me two seconds two seconds there we go right so so this is a big deal very very big deal so usd cat would be the most common thing that most people have in terms of brokers so let's quickly find uh, um, um you know that right so i would have I clearly have an upward short term long bias on Euro USD, short term long bias on pound USD. So now let's go see what USD CAD is saying. If these things are going up, then for sure, for sure, I need to see USD CAD falling. That's also going up. I will. Right, let's go. Let's just figure it out real quick. Let's figure it out real quick. Right, so the governing time frame. That makes sense, right? Remember, this is the dollar. The governing time is the dollar. You see, the supply was taken out a long time ago. 
okay, very much long time ago. And then what happened is during the takeout of this supply, the market's created a new one right there. A very big one, right? There we go. And price is coming back to that area. You can see this movement, very parabolic, very strong, right? This last governing candle of the month of September was powerful, right? Which is kind of like correlates with the dollar. Okay, so before I go too far, I'm going to pull up the DXY. DXY has been crazy, shaping lines, like literally opening up new supplies. We drew this together last time on Sunday, and we drew the demand that markets are going to pause, right? So the dollar literally entered into that supply that we spoke about and is now sitting on, you know, the first demand that I've marked, kind of like red, because obviously it's the first demand, and I'm not going to trust it easily. Uh, but there are multiple other demands popping up price, right? So the dollar is in a good place, temporarily slowed down uh, for about three days or so, but ultimately in an overall bullish trend, right? Now, back here, we've got top absolute correlations and top absolute negative correlations. And for USD, uh, Euro USD, we've got USD CAD at about 92%, right? 92% is not too bad. And it doesn't seem like that correlation is being applied right now, right? Because we've got a strong dollar, right? And euro is currently going up. So what you want to do in, like, when you have this information is to then make sure you are clear about where price is going to turn. Because USD CAD and DXY have a beyond, beyond reason, like a 99.9% .9 market correlation. DXY is going up dollar will go up, all right. And the only factor on this chart here is oil, right? The impact of oil because of the cap, right? So if price has arrived now at a supply, which to me it has, Yeah, to me it has. He has a rise of supply, right? Price can actually expect one of two things. To actually start to drop miserably, right? Because that's it. Or to bulldoze through the supply long term. And the only thing that we have um, as a reference to any of that is the fact that markets, firstly, you know, a long time ago in, in 2020, weakened that supply, actually taking most of the sell orders to the downside which means we can expect price to continue to the upside, opening this whole thing, which means the dollar will be relatively stronger than the CAD for a while, and when the dollar is relatively stronger than the, 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 the uh, USD CAD, you know, the supply is likely to leave, right? So if you go to the one hour time frame of US 30, and compare it to Euro USD and Pound USD, you might see very similar structures, right? But for the most part, we know that it is going to end with USD CAD finding new highs to the upside, right? Uh, um, while Euro USD starts to fundamentally react, right? Or, you know, the supplies in here start to choke price out and price comes back down, right? So this, this is something we'll tell, right? For now, in terms of a trade idea, if I go back to the daily, right, generally speaking, you can see that price here was trying or is trying to create some type of, you know, supply or, or, or I, I guess, trying to contribute, um, I'm sorry, create some sort of demand as it contributes to buy pressure against the sellers, right? This is a very, 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 very important thing to take note of because price can look big and aggressive and still lose, right? This is not, up until you have a qualified demand, you cannot just randomly buy into these things. But demand, most of the time, is to help you facilitate another break of structure. If you're trading with the trend, you constantly want to see new higher highs being opened up um, versus the opposite, okay? So please, please, please just be very mindful of that. We've got here a failed bullish in the candle that did bullish it, that's not even an imbalance, right? So the next thing that we have is this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, there we go. See that there? That would be a good place to start. So as EURUSD continues to climb high this week, if it does, then I, I would start to look for, you know, momentum to the downside and then immediately be back up, right, with it. Right, because this won't last forever. 
as long as the dollar is just taking a break from pumping high and not necessarily resigning. And this definitely won't last forever. So this is very important to press, right? So that's USD CAC. In fact, that's Euro USD, Pound USD, and USD CAC, right, guys? I really, really, really hope um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming across clear, right? So already done Pound USD. Remember that we've already kind of like looked at Pound USD uh, during the moment we were looking at the positive correlation for Euro USD, right? So the next chart that we're going to do is done Euro USD. Right, we've done pound USD, what's done euro USD, right? So number two is pound USD, sorry, we also done USD cap, right? So we've already done pound USD, right? We know it moves 82 pips, we know it's got a 98% correlation with euro USD. The thing that will correlate with pound USD the most outside of euro USD is pound cap. So let's go check that out first. Pound cat, sorry about that. Right, right, right. So we're going to look at the swing for pound cat first, but let's check, let's see first uh, uh, the correlation, right? Pound cat, the correlation to pound USD. So where's pound USD? There we go, that's pound USD over there. Right. Now we have the top positive correlation between the two. I've got pound cat all the way there at 95.9%, which is pretty much what I said earlier on, on the whiteboard. Uh, but let's just break down the other pairs, right? Pound USD, pound SGD. My assumption is most of you don't have this unless you're with you know, other brokers like Avatrade. Maybe ICE markets might have it. I normally trade these weird currencies on Avatrade. Pound Turkish Lira, you know, 98.7%. Pound NZD USD is a very, 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 very good one, right? You can use it as long as you're not using NZD USD for something else, right? And I'm not. I just prefer Pound Cat because I really have it free, right? Then there's Pound AUD USD, 96.2% positive correlation. I don't have it there because already Pound USD and USD, AUD USD, sorry, are both my primary markets. What I'm saying is, why would I want to? put AUD here when it's already a primary market. I must find other things that are linked up to my primary market than linking two primary markets together. It does not make sense to me. Right, so clearly with that list that I've just called out, the most logical uh, next highest one to take was pound cap with a 95.9% percent positive correlation over there and obviously top negative correlation absolute negative correlation um, 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 would probably be something dollar right so originally I talk, spoke about USD uh, 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 you know JPY with a 90 percent but you know we can't use USD CAD because USD CAD is already um, on the hook for uh, um, 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 negative correlation for Euro USD. All right, we can't use. Uh, you could, but it, and, and it would be great to use. Actually, it's quite popular uh, in the senior room, right? The China yuan, USD China yuan, right? You've got Euro pound at ninety six, Euro Swedish Corona at ninety four, the Czar at ninety five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So all all you need is just to choose one that you're gonna stick with, and then apply video one, two, three. Too. So understand the intimate details of that asset, how many pips it moves a day, and then understand how to read its structure, get that basic liquidity stuff drawing, the break of uh, character, all that kind of stuff, right? So for me, I, I, I'm definitely going to be using USD JPY, all right? Uh, but, but, but you know, it's, it's all the same. It's literally all the same. You can see a USD CAD, USD, a lot of USD pairs would have easily put the bill for negative correlation to the pound, right? So we already kind of like know what the pound is going to do. I'm talking about pound USD. Now let's start to see what's happening here, right? So we've got, let's go straight to the governor because geez Louise, look at this here. Look at this, look at this. Total annihilation of a governing demand, right? And I really need to talk to you guys about why the pound is faded so bad uh, in another video, right? Literally thought price was at least find the ultimate bottom and start to go up. You can see my old arrow. 
found, found the bottom, broke through the bottom, and is only starting to go up right now. But unlike pound USD, there isn't a, a, a nearby governing supply, all right? But what we do have is is the potential for uh, you know Fibonacci swing, right? Because we've got a swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, and in that particular swing, based on the current trajectory of this candlestick, where there was some type of rejection after price broke through a demand. You can see that the golden ratio area takes us back to an area that's already been marked up in one of our war rooms, right? This is literally this area with the tick here has been marked up in our war rooms previously, clearly. And it's just basically the tick or the area of value confirming that, you know, this will be a very good place for price to, to come back to, right? And not somewhere here, right? Because markets are very much almost there. And they could very much well, you know, just break, you know, this this whole area here and push price forward, right? So, but for the most part, for swings, we are currently short term long on pound cad, very short term low, and approaching sell setup pressure here, which could hold everything and send everything very spirally. Um, we shall see, right? So, on the daily time frame, this is what we have on the daily time frame. Right, beautiful spot to the downside. I'm just going to remove this government one because it's no more. Um, really beautiful, you know, pressure on all the way down, and then now markets are trying to make their way back up, right? So if, I would not be surprised if markets don't stop here. And if, if instead markets decide to, you know, move forward, right, all the way to these areas. And if it does decide that, I have pending orders already waiting here and here. All right, waiting for, for that particular call, and obviously also here. But I suspect this one to be the one that's not the best at all, right? So we shall see how this trade goes. But remember, pound CAD has a 95% positive correlation with euro USD. That means when this stops to move, euro pound USD is to stop to move, right? Negative correlation, like I said, for me is USD JPY, but but other types, USDs are USD, you know, no. Remember, some of them are exotic pairs. So you want to trade lightly with an exotic pair, right? So we've got um, pound, sorry, USD JPY next for me. So when I'm looking at trading pound USD, I'm looking at what the markets are, how markets are ready to pound CAD and USD JPY so that I've got a hedged portfolio I am selling something that's not the same thing as the dumb people selling it for, right? So, 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 and, and it's a very important, right? This is an H4 trend line, H4 trend line right here, right? I spoke about it briefly that be careful if this thing breaks, then you might see some, you know, downward momentum. And that unfortunately has not yet happened, but it's a very, very high chance that the dollar is very much overextended. I, I wouldn't know. And because it's, it, that's the case, it's, very important, very important that we are able to locate it when supplies are now in charge and longs are no longer allowed and we allow price to drop. All right, absolutely nice price to drop. Um, it would be nice if it does drop, then we can buy, you know, a little bit cheaper. Thing. But this is a very good drop as well to get in as a trader, right? To kind of like fill the gap um, all the way down. There. But that's kind of like USD JPY. All right, USD JPY with a high negative correlation to AUD, uh, uh, sorry, to, 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 to pound USD, right? So Euro USD goes with pound USD, does not go with USD CAD. Pound USD goes with pound CAD, but you know, would not go so well with USD JPY. So if I'm buying there, I'm selling here. So that's why you'll notice that the, the Euro USD and Pound USD, we're talking about changes of character and demands taking over price. But when it comes to USD CAD and USD JPY, we're talking about price arriving at significant supplies and waiting to see what price will do. The driving price, by the way, for those two, and by two, I'm referring to USD CAD and USD JPY, is the dollar. This this is the driving thing, right? So the H4 time frame, you can see the, the supplies I drew for you guys in the war room last week perfectly marked, right? The last... Last set, guys, um, I apologize for my low energy today. Um, you know, I've just been talking and, and traveling, talking and traveling, but this is good. This is good stuff that I've given you. I really hope you guys take the time to think about it. We are on AUD, USD, right? Markets have fallen flat into finally 
the 2020 levels, COVID levels, and we know what happened to the other charts. We know that this was eventually removed. We know Euro USD has removed its own. We know Pound USD has removed its own. What makes the AUD USD COVID demand special? I'll tell you what, nothing, absolutely nothing, right? So if the pressure continues to the downside, we can expect for selling to continue, all right? So I understand with this particular chart, if you've already closed your, your, your shorts that we spoke about, I really haven't. So all I'm doing, guys, is managing swings right now, right? So for example, I, I'll, I'll, I have a stop loss somewhere out there. It's that simple, right? I have a stop loss somewhere out there. This was missed, but that update was not missed, right? Just holding this area. Why I'm hoping this supply will push price back down. And if it doesn't, so be it, right? But I have a, a, a good, good stop loss trail, you know, somewhere up there, right? And, and that's really whatever I press now. Close, close, close. That's really something that you should all be considering, you know, you know, you know thinking about, right? So the next sell or swing sell for AUD USD is somewhere in here. Right, let's go to the daily time frame and I'll show you what I mean. Right, there is this here and this is this supply. There are multiple of them along the way, but I don't care that much for them. Right, swing high, swing low. If you look at this too, just to bring up the power of the Fibonacci, this is a swing right at the first market phase of the drop. Is this one price comes back to that 50 percent range, right? Boom, and then the second market phase of the drop from there to somewhere there is that one right i'll show it to you carefully right then price comes in second time boom price comes in that and that golden ratio right and then now we've got something similar but markets coming all the way there and the price coming all the way down there boom golden ratio somewhere here right so until price comes back to this area right you know you can assume that that might be the next best selling place. I hope that makes sense. Again, if what I just did doesn't make sense because of time, I can't get into it, but there's an incredible lecture on the channel around um, 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 retracement trading that I just dropped recently. Please watch it, right? So these are our, our very much interested areas, right? So we expect to see distribution this year. I could stop price down, but I'm hoping markets aim for higher and sell off somewhere here and there, right? If that's the case, then you know we can expect something like that, right? So you can see AUD USD is trading behind the masses. It's also a risk asset, but it's not yet pointing upwards like Euro USD, Pound USD, which means you can use those as a primary market blueprint and maybe, maybe start to look and wait for those changes of characters and all those kind of things to see, you know, how AUD is reacting to a point where you might be able to catch a buy. And when you catch that buy, you know how far to ride out that buy, right? So that might happen this week. Be very careful, right? We you know, look out for it. it. Might happen this week, and then we'll see how high price can go uh, into those daily supplies. But we might, we're not done. Once we look at AUD USD, I like to understand what is the top positive correlation with it, and my and I'll explain my choices and also. Um, you know, the negative correlation, how to trade all three pairs together. Right, so for AUD, USD, the most positive correlation that I have or that I chose outside of NZD, USD, of course, AUD, SGD is not a popular thing uh, to trade. A lot of you guys don't have SGD with your broker. Pound USD is already a primary market for some of the stuff we're doing. Some of you don't have, you know, pound tickets there on your broker. So like I said earlier on number five, which was AUD, NZ, AUD, USD will positively correlate 95% with NZD CAD. And that's what we had on the whiteboard. And so that's what we're going to look at, right? So you can tell right now that AUD is just kind of like nose diving and falling into its own poop, right? You can tell the governor that AUD, USD is still, still, you know, deciding what to do with a 2020 governing demand whereas all the other charts have removed those right so let's see what's going on in the NZD cap was it 85 percent or 95 percent correlation right sorry it's 95 percent right and I wrote 85 right I must have read this all this stuff while I was so tired when I when I'm tired and I keep working at night I generally make you know these crazy mistakes um, so I'm very glad I'm taking this nice and slow 
and going back to a justified. So NZT CAD uh, is 95%. All right, so I wrote the right thing. Ugh, I thought I wrote 85 right? so I apologize. Or maybe I already corrected it. I already corrected it. I wrote the wrong thing, then I corrected it, right? There we go. Right, so it's a 95% correlation, which is pretty damn good, right? So let's go to NZT CAD. You can already tell green is what inside of the money of free falling, right? So this is the NZT CAD on the governor. You remember, uh, my, this is my swing setups. My arrow was here. I said we're going to keep selling. We already know how big this demand is. You know, they, they, there's unfortunately not been an instruction to buy. And that's just because, you know, we, we just during the tank this market. Right? Guys, all these signals were given in between war and whatever and whatever to 82, right? This whole year and a little bit last year, we've been really munching down these clear things. My suspicion is this is going to fall. Look at this. There is a 95% positive correlation. Can you see? This is that demand that we're talking about. The 2020 demand for NZD CAD was taken out. The majority of whatever nonsense is left here is currently being taken out, right? So the next time markets have a point of place to kind of like even think about or go to is all the way down there, right? So you don't want to be long in this market, my humble opinion. On the weekly time frame, we can see that we've got a bearish engulfing pattern. Uh, uh, that was created about three weeks ago, confirming a previous order block, confirming an older, bigger supply. Um, um, so long term, you know, still looking bearish on the daily time frame. On Friday, we close with another supply order block, right? So, so AUD USD is bound to break its COVID levels as its partner, its twin, its 95% correlated asset NZD care continues to the downside. And then you go to your your intraday trading setups, right? Don't worry about the green. The green is because we're inside a deep, deep, deep governing uh, demand, right? And, and, and for me personally, I'm not into selling when I'm in the strong demands. But as an end, as a day trader, you know, you know, you, you just need to keep looking at these things. Right? So wow, okay, fine. So markets come in, break this change of, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a break of structure to the downside, a clean reaction to to, to a supply inside the governing tight uh, you know, territory so markets couldn't even hold that buy momentum that they wanted to hold as markets made contact with the supply markets started to sell and now you start to ask yourself well where can i get in where can i get in right geez louise right you most likely want to wait for retracement on the one hour right now you don't have one but if monday is a green day and markets open going to the upside then you might want to start looking into reselling that area over there. If markets do everything they're supposed to do, let's see what's inside this area. Right, there you go. So that's it. In the one hour time frame, that's a nice clean version of in pattern, right? You want to start setting up some sell orders there and then see what happens after that. What would be awesome is if price could take out the slow. That would be awesome because that is extremely bearish, right? So for markets to do this, and that would be great that would be great if markets were to do something something along those lines there right but you're gonna have to pull out your uh, liquidity schematic that i told you guys about uh in, in video uh, uh four or five or whatever right so you can see there we've got some type of schematic going on uh some supply that's been you know used to, to, to tease a lot of retail traders from right and we need wait for the big push for markets to push price against retail traders and on that beautiful day you know during whatever session that it will be we have price pushed down and if it does we might even get a beautiful break of structure to the downside here right but all of this will be also equally influencing how AUD USD moves right the negative correlation here for AUD USD that I've chosen that I see is still not here as well. But I was very with USD stress frank for these type of things because again, like I said, um, um, there's a reason, right? So NZD USD obviously uh, is an absolute correlation. Let's come here to negative, sorry, right? So USD CAD, we're already using USD CAD for Euro USD, right? USD is our, I'll teach you guys in the next video. I like using this for minerals like silver and gold, etc. right? So. You'll, you'll decide for yourself. You could use USD China. You know, it's nothing that I trade a lot uh, on, on the day trade, but you can see there's a 95, 96% negative correlation for that. So that would be a good uh, test match. But again, for all these charts, it's the same logic. 
It's the same logic, ladies and gentlemen, where you are just understanding your asset, its profile, how it moves, its correlation, its negative pairs. But I think the, the, the strength of this war room today was the fact that I've just kind of like handed out the data, you know, for you, right? So this is like years of work and testing, all that kind of stuff. Handed out the data for you so you can back test this. So could we, could we please go make money this week with these uh, uh, basically nine charts, right? Your primary charts here, your correlated charts there, Let's go make money. Let's go make money. Um, and if you do make money, please consider giving back, not to me, right, but to CHD Awareness, right? The Cyclothon and the fundraising event ends on the 8th of October. Uh, 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 so it would be very nice if the 365 family pull through for that. Uh, all funds, please go to the official bank account, uh, not to Leroy, not to the 365 Trading Academy. What we would ask, though, is that people email Please do email your proof of payments, right? Email proof of payments. If you do donate, no pressure, to our account at 365 Trading Academy. Why? Well, first of all, we want to see what we can do as a community, as a 365 Trading Academy. But I'm, I'm happy to match. I'm happy to match everything that is raised. So if people, if the entire whoever is watching this video, if you raise $5 right now, I'll match you. I'll match your five so we can give 10. You guys, you, you, you get what I'm saying? If you raise a thousand US dollars, I'll match that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll keep pouring money into this um, until it's done. It's a big cause. I've met the young lady who needs a heart transplant. She, she, she's, she's an amazing young lady. She's currently 17 years uh, old right now, and she's relying on community medical aid. As, you know, you know, phased out. She said four open heart surgery operations, and she can't have any more. She needs a heart transplant, right? So, you know, please do that. You know, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm sorry, I was a bit low energy towards the end. It's been a tough weekend, guys. You know, I feel very exhausted. But let me catch a flight. Let me go home on Monday. Let me rest, recharge. Then on Tuesday, we'll then continue with this. All right. But there's money on the table. Don't leave it, all right? Don't forget to click on those links. Better start on your education, right? Link is down below. Um, um, become better as a trader. 365, wishing you well. God bless. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace. I am out.